All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you didn't see the last video, I asked to test your game knowledge. I wanted to see if you could find the counter in this clip. And a lot of you guys, you guys passed. You guys passed. Some of you guys might have not known like the mechanic, you might have worded it a little different, but you guys got the idea of what I was looking for. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. I'm going to show you guys how to do it, for, like for the new players that might not even know that this is in the game. I've seen people that stream USC 4 not know that this is even in the game or not. They don't know what they're getting caught with when this happens to them. So how to do this is as soon as a hook lands on the lead side of your block, has to be the lead side. I just want you to keep that in mind. It has to hit the lead side. So I'm going to do it here. I'm going to have Alex throw the hook and then block after. So as soon as that hook hits, I let go of block and I input my own lead hook. Right there, you know, I mistimed it on purpose just to show you the damage. Now look how much more damage I, I get when I do get it. 125% vulnerability damage. So I, I just got counter damage for just blocking and then throwing a lead hook. So this is orthodox versus orthodox. Again, I'm going to have him throw a jab lead hook and then have him block after. Right there, I missed it, but right here, hit it. So, as I mentioned, you can do this for overhands as well. It's the same idea, as soon as it hits the block, the timing on this is a little bit more tricky, I feel. So, definitely go practice it. As soon as it hits, input a lead hook. So the best way I feel how to use this technique is trying to hit it in the middle of a combo. Because if you think about it, there's a lot of combos that have a hook in the middle like straight lead hook straight or straight lead hook uppercut or straight lead hook hook so the reason that this can do so much damage is because not only do you get the counter damage from the lead hook counter but you get the vulnerability damage from hitting in before the third strike so if you can slip in a combo there like I just did right there lead hook uppercut because you can combo off this block counter. You're going to get some good damage. And it can really change a fight. Like say you're having a hard time moving your head. Or you have a fighter that maybe has low head movement stat. Right here I'm showing you. You can do it off the movement slip hook. If your opponent keeps doing that. But yeah. You just got to get into practice mode. Just practice it. It will pay off, I promise you. But I'm going to show you two fights. I'm going to talk you through them. One's kind of an older fight. But anyway, we're going to get right to it. So some of you might know my opponent here. He streams UFC 4. He streams other games too. I've watched a few of his videos. I didn't even realize it was him. I was showing my friend this video and he's like, he's like, dude, that's uh that guy does a uh, content too. So anyway, I just could not get my head movement down. As you see, I'm trying to move my head a little bit, trying to lunge. Just nothing was working out for me. As you see, he's being pretty patient now. At first he was being kind of aggressive. He's really, like he really wants to keep the center though, as you can tell. Rocks me, goes to the body good. Like he had very like kind of odd timing. It might not like seem like it, but I, just, I couldn't get his timing down. Right there I tried to, I thought I was going to throw an uppercut, so I tried a, uh, a sway hook. So right about here is where I start to catch on that I can block counter this guy. Right there, hit him with one. It's very sneaky. Hit him with two, three. And and I threw a uppercut in there as well. So I tried to finish the fight. You guys know me. I always try to finish fights. 
Like, if we're just having fun, that's that's one thing, but I always try to finish fights. So now he's in my world. This is really where I want to be, and but he gets up. So I'm like, all right. And then look, he's, he's still throwing that lead hook. He's not catching on to what is, like, like what's happening. Ooh, right there could have been bad if, if he had just come forward a little bit. But I'm waiting on that lead hook now. Because I'm realizing he's not, like, he, like he's not catching on. I could have moved around a little bit more in this fight. I don't even know if I catch him again. Oh, that was just, oh man, he ran into that. I believe it was a jab hook as he was coming forward. I did not catch him with any more block counters, but you guys saw I was getting wrecked. I was getting wrecked. I just, for some reason, I could not get my head movement down. And then, uh, hit him with the, ooh, hit him with the block counters. So it really only took three block counters to get him, you know, hurt enough to end him with, you know, a jab hook and then a follow up on the ground. And that's, uh, that's Dustin Poirier versus, you know. Makano, which I believe Makano only has like 90 power, so just just keep that in mind. You know, you guys know I use uh, I use all kinds of different fighters. I don't know why. I guess I just you know like don't care really. Do not care, and I am gonna start posting some losses here because I know someone's gonna say it eventually. Oh, this dude don't post losses. But don't worry, I got some losses coming. You know, I want to try to make them worthwhile. I want to learn from them. So I want us all to learn from them. But all right, we're going to move on to the next fight. It is going to be Kelvin Gastelum versus Nick Diaz. This I thought was a pretty good fight. So let's get it. So I got a bunch of fights with uh, Kelvin Gastelum because... I thought he was fighting this weekend, or fighting today. Which the card's probably going to start by the time that uh, I put this out. So, it is what it is. You guys can watch it after, or before. So, I noticed right away, he's going high-low. You know, jab straight to the body. Right there, he did a jab hook. Another straight to the body. So when someone starts to work my body, I try to keep it equal. And right there, I hit him with a nice, uh, all those, almost all of them hit. Right there, I sidestep, but he hits me with a nice rear body hook. So I'm just trying to keep it simple, but trying to kind of chain these, chain these two hitters together. Like, you know, jab, rear hook, uppercut straight. Lead hook, uh, body uppercut, things like that. Keep things simple, but try to be effective. And also, I'm trusting my blog. This is something I really uh, have to stress to you guys. A lot of people are still complaining about the block. You just got to trust it. I mean, obviously, once it gets down there, you got to get out of the way. You can't just rely solely on your block, but like, look. Yeah, it did a little bleed through damage, but it didn't do much long term damage. You guys gotta know the difference between short term and long term. Right there, I rock him with a straight uppercut. Rear hook, uppercut. I'm trying to like mix up, like, trying to throw combos that not many people like see. Like rear hook, uppercut. Like, who, like who throws that? So right here, you're gonna start, you're gonna start to see me throw, like single shots out, like lead hook. One, it's it's for me to kind of try to bait them to see what they like how they're gonna react to it. And also, I'm fighting Nick Diaz. 
a guy known for high stamina, so I want to keep my stamina high. I know it's only a three round fight, but if Nick Diaz gets a stamina advantage on you, it, and the player's pretty good, which this player's not bad. You know, this player's, like I've seen worse. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is you don't want to be in a stamina advantage against Nick Diaz. And right here, he could have just chilled. He rocked me. I, mean, I thought the round was pretty even up until that point. But look, he gets super aggressive. Boom, uppercut. Interrupted him. Oh, and I knocked him down again. I forgot about that. I rocked him before, but up until that point, I feel like he was probably winning the round. It seemed like he was landing more shots. I just remember at the time, I, I think I thought that he was winning that round until, obviously, I dropped him twice. So not to spoil anything, but I'm starting to like remember what happened. Which, uh, yeah, you guys are going to enjoy this round. I... So some things I picked up on in the last round, he was doing, he was doing a lot of jabs, a lot of jab straights. Like right there, straight. Right there, I catch him with the pry combo. I see pry throw that combo quite a bit. Right here, jab straight, jab straight. But I catch him with the sway hook. Rip his body. He's throwing when he's hurt, which is not good. Then he makes a big mistake. Boom, he throws a knee. I sidestep it. Hit him with the body shot. And then just... It just goes downhill for him. He tries to throw an uppercut, but boom, I hit him to the body. Hurt him. Go up top. And right here, he actually got this transition coming up here. I knew he was going to go for it too, because they always go for it. They always at least try it, but look, boom, I get up. Nice uh, lunge, but... He didn't do anything with it. Then right here, this is where the block counter comes into play, right there. Man, he just said screw it. I'm gonna run that back just so you guys can see it. Look, lead hook, rear hook on my front block. Boom, dropped him clean. Clean, clean work. Clean work, but yeah, if you have not practiced the block counter or try it or have tried to add it to your game, I know I made a video about this block counter a while ago, but honestly, sometimes I forget about it. Like, not that I forget about it, I guess I just don't like, I just don't think about it. You know, I'm not like, I'm not that serious, like, into the game. You know, I try to have fun, I try to put on good fights. Of course, I try, like, I want the fights to look good, of course, but I also want them to look fun, like, sometimes I just like a good war, you know what I mean? But sometimes I like a good tactical war as well. But I'm going to be putting out more videos about, like, how to read your opponent. There's a few important things that I feel, like, high-level players don't talk about, like, 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 you, you should know combos. You should know the combos because it, it will help you to try to counter, you know, your opponent. Man, my dog is like tweaking out. But, so if you if you guys hear that in the background, that's my dog. But, uh, yeah guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that. But, as always, if you don't do any of that, at least have a good day. And I will see you guys in the next one. Also, let me know if you use this counter. Do you use it often? Because I'm, I'm just curious to see how many people actually like, like use it. But alright, that's it. I'm out.